Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for another tutorial in Melinda's Rubber Room. I'm Melinda Pierce and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm here today to show you how to make this fun triangle uh, standing card. It's a really fun card to make, um, great card to receive as well. Um, I'm sure everybody will be impressed with um, how nice this is to put on their mantle or on their shelves um, when it's standing up. And it's actually not that difficult to make. So I'm going to point you down to my work surface and show you how to put it together. So this is a card that we did at my Zoom session this past week on Wednesday. I have those sessions every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to noon Pacific time. Uh, the information is all on my Zoom. Uh, I'm on my Facebook page at Melinda's Rubber Room. So you can find me there. Um, you can see all the information, all the measurements for the card that we'll be making that uh, Wednesday. So you can make the card along with me. If you don't want to make the card at that time, you can obviously watch my Zoom, uh, my YouTube session afterwards where I'll show you how to make the card. Um, but you're also welcome just to join in and watch how I make the card as well during the Zoom session. So I have all of my card, all of my um, pieces of paper cut and scored already, but I'll go over all of those measurements. Um, one of the gals that joined me on, on Wednesday decided that she wanted to make a A2 size card so um, it would fit into a regular envelope. Um, my card will fit into a 6x6 envelope. So if you want to make the smaller size, I do have those measurements. Um, it goes together exactly the same way. And I thank you um, for passing those measurements along to me. So the... Um, Measurements that are on the purple post-it are for the 6x6, and the A2 size is on the yellow post-it. Okay, so the base of our card for the 11 by 6 uh, or for the 6x6 starts at 11 inches by 6 inches. So this is 11 inches this way and 6 inches. And you want to score that at 3 inches six inches, seven and a half, nine, and 10. Now those score lines will be the same for the six by six as the A2. The A2, you start with 11 inch by four and a quarter inches. Okay, and then once you have that scored, I'll go over those score lines again. Three inches, six, seven and a half, nine, and 10. Okay, so you're going to start with a mountain fold and you're just going to fold this up as an accordion. So mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain. So it folds down like that. So that's the base of the card. And then we have uh, some more base of cardstock. Excuse me. So those pieces measure Four and an eighth by four and an eighth, three fifths, three and five eighths by three and five eighths, three and one eighth by three and one eighth. And then if you're doing the A2 size, it's two and seven eighths by two and two and seven eighths, two and three quarters by two and three quarters, and two and five eighths by two and five eighths. Okay, I'm just going to scoot this up because I'm going to run out of room here. All right, so those are our base pieces. We have some white pieces. So for the six by six, the white pieces measure, you need two pieces that measure two and three quarters by five and three quarters, three and qu three, three quarters inch by five and three quarters inch, three and three eighths by three and three eighths. And for the A2, you need two pieces that measure two and three quarters by four inches, two and a quarter inch by two and a quarter inch, three quarters of an inch by four inch. So those are our white pieces. And then we have our designer series paper. I'm using Wonderful World. Um, this is designer series paper that you can get for free during celebration. Celebration ends at the end of this month. So if you'd like to get in on those uh, freebies, 
you can do so by clicking on my online store at Melinda's melindapierce.stampinup.net or if you're on my Facebook page you can just click on the shop now button and that'll take you to right to my online store so the DSP measures three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths one and a quarter by five and three quarters and for the A2 you need two and five eighths by two and five eighths two and three quarters by two and three quarters and one and a quarter by four okay so um, I want to thank meme I think that's how you pronounce it uh, she's the one that provided the A2 measurements um, she was a great help on my Facebook page and I loved having her join in um, it's always great to meet new people on, on Zoom, and it's a great way to find out new techniques from other people, too, not just from myself. So it's a fun way to um, share, um, share all your knowledge, which is always fun to do. Okay, so we are going to start with our white pieces of cardstock, and those just go on those first two sections of the base. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue those down. Now, if you are stamping a greeting or something, you would want to stamp that first, as well as a decoration if you want to do that. I have um, die cut my decoration, so I'm just going to glue that on afterwards. So a lot of the flowers that I used on my original sample, I did uh, do some fussy cutting and whatnot, but... Um, this time I decided to use some die cuts, which are a little quicker to do. All right, so those are the two white sections. And then we have another white section right in the front of the card. I'm just going to turn it this way. So that's going to go right here. So I will be showing you how to make an envelope for a six by six card. If you stick with me to the end, um, I'll show you how to do that. Um, Trying to decide if I want to change the <laughs> the side of the paper that I use, but I think I really like these blue flowers. And it'd be sad when this paper is no longer available. It's such a pretty paper. If you watched any of my other YouTube videos, you've seen me use it a lot. Okay, so I'm just going to take my white square and put it right on top of my medium um, base square. Just like that. And then my two other pieces of designer series paper just goes on to those other two squares. So if you're using a directional print um, designer series paper, you do want to kind of make sure that it is um, that you, when you cut your squares, the flowers are, or the design is somewhat facing up on a diagonal. So what I mean is normally you would cut your paper square like this or like this, which is kind of what I did. Um, but it's going to end up on your card on a diagonal like this. So my print is, is varied enough that it looks okay. But if you have some other directional print you want to make sure that it's going this way onto that diagonal. <clears throat> There's actually very little stamping on this card. It's just the greeting. And the rest is all designer series paper. And then of course if you want to do um, the stamped images and then fuss, um, die cut them out, there's that opportunity to stamp as well. Okay, so we're going to take the largest square and attach it to this section here. So what you want to do is put your square down. It's going to go just above your fold line. 
and you want to make sure that you only put glue on the back side of this piece just down in this corner you don't want to put any glue right here because that's not where you want it to be attached okay so you want to make sure that your card is facing the right way on that diagonal and that you only put glue on that one corner just like so and you can use um, double-sided tape here if you want I'm just I just like using glue right now I, I'm just in a, one of those phases where I prefer the wet glue I think because it gives me a little bit more time to move things around okay so there's our first panel now the second panel you do the same thing just on the next section now remember this section is quite narrow so you want to make sure that you only put glue on this tip of that card of that uh, square just kind of center that you can close this up to make sure that your uh, your card is going to close up properly move this around a little bit to make sure it's aligned with that first square that you put down and again it's going to go like that all right and then you're going to close that last section and that last diamond is going to go just like that so again tiny little section here just put a little bit of glue right on that corner where it's going to be attached you can see how quickly this goes together once you have all your pieces cut and all the pieces are just straight cuts so there's nothing real fancy about this card but it looks pretty impressive when you get it in the mail okay so that is basically the finished card all i have to do is put a greeting on it and decorate it a little bit so like i said i have some die cuts here that i stamped and shaded in um let me show you how i did that so these two i haven't colored in yet so I stamped these images, die cut them, and then I just took up my blender brush, picked up a little bit of ink, and just went right over that stamped image. It's a great way to get colored images without sitting there and having to um, use your markers or other tools to color in your images. It's really quick and easy. Oops. dropping things all over the place okay so these two here I'm just going to put right down here in the corner one on each side just like so and then I'm going to I don't like having all this white space up here so I'm just going to sprinkle a few of the small ones up there have some little flowers poking out <coughs> so the six by six card uh, fits exactly into a, a six by six envelope but the a2 uh, card is a little bit smaller than a regular size card so it gives you the opportunity to put some of your flowers up around the border if you're doing that just make sure that it's still going to fit in the card okay so there is my finished card and i'm going to turn this over and just put this little guy back here glue that into place this this uh stamped image these the stamped images i'm using are from the cottage rose stamp set and i'm using these three little guys and then um using this die here that gives you that kind of skeleton um, outline of the flowers. It's a beautiful set. I just love all the flowers in there. Just putting little dots of glue on these thinner sections so they'll stay down a little bit. There we go.
So all I have to do is put a greeting on there. I think I'm going to leave this one blank so that I can use it for whatever purpose I want. All right. Hope you enjoyed that tutorial and learned something new. Uh, feel free to join me on my uh, Facebook page on Melinda's Rubber Room, as well as my Zoom sessions. You can get all the information on my Facebook page. Would love to see you. Love seeing new faces and getting to know all of you. And it's a fun time to share what we know and what we love to do. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to message me on my YouTube channel or on my Facebook page. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And feel free to uh, shop my online store at melindapierce.stampinup.net. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.